Welcome to Cook the Garden Podcast, your weekly audio source for delicious and easy garden fresh recipes and growing tips. I'm your host, Janine Grays. Let's cook the garden. Hello, hello, friends, and welcome back. You're listening to episode number three of Cook the Garden. I'm so excited this week to share this one pot meal perfect for the fall. And although it's still pretty hot where I'm located, I always love a bowl of delicious comfort food. And this week's recipe is exactly that. I'm sharing my poblano chicken squash chili and I can't wait to share this because it's absolutely one of my family's favorite meals. And it's so incredibly easy to make with, of course, seasonal ingredients, including butternut squash, which is this week's featured ingredient. It also pairs beautifully with my poblano peppers. So I'll talk a little bit about the peppers as well, because this time of year, I just have a ton of them. So I'll touch on the peppers in a little bit, but for the squash, because I'm in a warmer climate, I normally don't sow the seeds until later in the year. So August, September time is when I normally sow my seeds for squash, um, giving me a harvest um, in late October and November. So that's perfect. However, Uh, We are starting to see a lot of squash in the stores now. So I love making this dish because I get to use the abundance of peppers that I have um, that I grow in my garden as especially my poblano peppers because they grow so easily as soon as I sow them they just they just thrive and I don't really have to do much to them. So I have quite a bit of poblanos. So on a scale, um, on the heat scale for peppers, poblanos have more of a milder flavor, but they can be hit or miss sometimes depending on the specific plant. Sometimes some of them grow spicier peppers than others. And because they have a thick wall, they're great for stuffing and roasting. So you can also dry them too and chop them and freeze them so you can have throughout the year. So I love my poblano peppers and they go with everything, but they really, really go well in this chili. So before I get into the recipe, I wanna provide some alternatives for some of the ingredients. The sweet and nutty flavor of the butternut squash is what makes this recipe really great, but you can also use many other winter squashes as well, um, such as acorn squash, sugar pumpkin, which is also known as pie pumpkin, buttercup squash, or even sweet potatoes or carrots would also be great alternatives um, in this dish. Bell peppers or Anaheim peppers make excellent substitutes if you don't have the poblano peppers on hand. And my favorite hack of all is purchasing a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and shredding it up to use in my chilies and soups. It cuts down on time spent preparing the meal. And that's why this hearty recipe takes no more than 45 minutes from start to finish. You can even adjust the recipe to make it vegetarian or vegan by leaving out the chicken and also replacing the chicken broth with vegetable broth. If you need a protein replacement, mushrooms are perfect in this recipe. You can also add more beans or try jackfruit or tofu, which is perfect Um, with the jackfruit. It's an excellent choice because it can actually take on a similar texture to the shredded chicken if that's something you're looking for. So I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's get started with the recipe and I'll share some growing tips for the butternut squash later. Also make sure to check the show notes. I will include a link to the full recipe. So let's start with the ingredients. We're gonna go ahead and start with one green bell pepper chopped, one medium yellow onion chopped, one small or medium butternut squash cubed, one medium poblano pepper chopped, two cloves of garlic minced, two tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons chili powder, a fourth of a cup of olive oil, three cups shredded rotisserie chicken, 32 ounces of chicken broth, and I use a low sodium chicken broth. 
one can of diced fire roasted tomatoes, undrained, one can black beans, rinsed and drained, salt and pepper to taste, fresh cilantro, and a few optional toppings you can use, such as sour cream, tortilla chips, or shredded cheese. We're gonna start by heating your oil over medium heat in a large Dutch oven or pot. You're gonna add your onions, bell peppers, and poblano peppers. Stir occasionally for about three to five minutes until the onion has softened. And now you're gonna add your squash, garlic, and you're gonna stir that together really nicely with your onions and peppers for another three to five minutes. After that, you're gonna add and stir in your chili powder and tomato paste. Stir it in really good, then add your shredded chicken, broth, and the canned tomatoes. You also want to throw in your black beans at this time. By now, your house is smelling absolutely delicious, and we're going to go ahead and bring that to a boil. Once you've brought it up to a boil, go ahead and reduce the heat to low, and just let it simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. You want to make sure you cover your pot up and just let it do its thing. It's smelling really good and these flavors, they are just marrying together and getting really happy. So after your 25 to 30 minutes is up, you want to go ahead and season it with your salt and pepper and remove it from the heat. This is a good time to taste your chili. Make sure it's to your liking. You can add any additional salt and pepper or seasonings. And that's basically it. Um, oh, and don't forget to add your fresh cilantro. I know there are some people out there who aren't big fans of cilantro, but I absolutely love it. And the more the better for me. But that's just me, okay? So you can go ahead and it's, it's completed and you can serve it. I love to add additional toppings to mine, including sour cream, additional shredded cheese, um, even some jalapenos. So go to town on that. Just add whatever your favorite toppings are and enjoy. And I did want to add another thing about this recipe. It's really great for freezing. It freezes very nicely. So try doubling up on the recipe and freezing a portion for later. It heats up really great on a stove top or in an Instapot. Doing that has definitely saved me a bunch of time and has bailed me out of a few situations where I was short on time as well. So definitely give it a try and let me know what you think. So let's have a little bit of garden talk and talk about butternut squash. So butternut squash is relatively easy to grow. Uh, like I mentioned, I normally sow them a little bit later, um, but its growing season begins in the summer for a fall harvest. This means that the soil should be warmed by the sun and the warm temperature is really crucial because uh, butternut squash plants are tender and the seedlings will basically freeze with any slightest frost. Um, so the seeds will germinate in warm soil. Butternut squash plants are heavy feeders and drinkers too. So you definitely need to make sure that you provide them with adequate water throughout their growing period um, all the way up to maturity. A good way to make sure that your butternut squash plants um, remain um, hydrated is to make sure that your um, growing area is covered with mulch. Mulch really helps to trap that moisture in and uh, prevents it from drying out. So when it's time to harvest your squash, um, Cut them from the vines and leave a few inches of the stem intact. The stem actually prevents the squash from rotting fast. So butternut squash stores really well um, after harvesting if you keep it in a cool, dry place. Um, many times they will last up to um, three months or maybe even longer, which makes it a really, really great winter vegetable. So that's my time today, friends. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. For the full recipe, definitely check out the link in the show notes. And I also have a step-by-step -step YouTube video. So I'll go ahead and drop that link in the show notes as well.
As always, thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful week. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Cook the Garden. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a five-star review. As a new podcast, it really helps to add value while growing our awesome community. As always, I really appreciate it. Until next time, friends, keep slaying those garden-fresh recipes.